Alright guys, no bull****. You want to get into the best shape of your life. You want to build muscle. You want to lose fat. You want to achieve the body of your dreams. Diet, cardio, training, my exact approach, and the start of my shred. Let's do it. Let's do it. What is good guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning into this one and uh, we got a big 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 video coming today And I hopefully don't make this 30 minutes long I don't really know because I'm filming it right now Anyways, I'm gonna be going over literally everything you need to know to pretty much like achieve your dream physique Is that a question? Is that a is that a statement? I don't know but in this video You're gonna find out pretty much exactly what you need to be doing in terms of your diet your cardio your training just your overall life in general and your mindset to actually get to that next step to build muscle to lose fat or whatever your goal is okay so within the diet we're going to be going over literally everything from calories to macros cardio when should you adjust and your training what should your training split look like and just how my training looks like as well as my exact starting point for day one of my current summer shred okay i know it's gonna be a lot and uh don't don't mind the dirtiness of uh the bed here i just woke up so I haven't made my bed yet. But with that being said, let's just get right into it with the most important thing, in my opinion. <sighs> the diet. Now, first off, in terms of the actual diet, I'm gonna go into the technical side of things. So your calories, your macros, everything like that. And then actually adhering to your diet to make sure you can actually hit your diet and you can actually like stick to it over the long term because that is the ultimate goal. If you can stick with it over the long term, your results and your progression will 100% show in not only your body, but also your mind and like how you're actually sticking to your diet plan. So. Bam. You didn't think I could pull out this bad boy, eh? Yeah. Let's make sure that's in the frame. The first thing you want to ensure that you like that you're doing is you gotta be in a calorie deficit, okay? Especially if your main goal is to lose weight, is to lose fat, to reveal your abs, or just to get into better shape. Most people think about losing body fat, and the way to do this is, well, you're probably overweight if you're starting this journey, so you gotta be in a calorie deficit. Now, there's so many calculators and counters out there on the internet that you can use to find your BMR, or to alternatively find how many calories you technically need with some random calculator but alternatively the best way to do so is to track your calorie intake for two to three weeks and see how your body is reacting to that amount of calories all this means is that you use let's say my fitness pal my fitness pal is a software tracker that tracks your meals and you can just input all your foods and everything i'll tie into that later on you can just track your food intake then let's say your body weight stayed the same that's perfect you've found your maintenance calories then you can subtract around 300 to 500 from that amount but let's say your weight increased so you gained weight over those two to three weeks of tracking your calories every single day well then you're now in a surplus so you must reevaluate and subtract your calories even more because you want to find your maintenance you want to find the amount of calories that you can consume every single day paired with training and cardio that makes you not lose or gain any weight because then you can subtract calories from that amount to put you into this calorie deficit trust me if you don't even know where to start if you don't know how many calories to start with take your body weight in pounds and multiply it by 14 to 16 again this is just a rough estimate but for all those people who are lazy they don't want to track their weight and to see how their weight fluctuates in a two to three week period take your weight multiply it by 14 to 16 get this amount of calories track that amount of calories every single day as precise as possible and then reevaluate and see how your body is fluctuating okay and this ties into weighing yourself every single morning fasted you haven't ate anything you haven't drank anything after you go to the washroom you weigh yourself so after you have found your maintenance level of calories and you've subtracted 300 to 500 to put yourself into this calorie deficit 
Now you want to set your protein intake. Now for every single individual, this will be different. For a rough estimate, 0.8 to 1.2 grams per pound of body weight. So if you're 180 pounds, if you stick this right in the middle, one times 180, you should be having 180 grams of protein every single day. Again, just a rough estimate. Don't overcomplicate things because when you start to overcomplicate things, that's when you can fall off the wagon and you don't actually adhere to your diet. So let's just set that number, all right? Now in terms of your carbs and your fats, this will ultimately determine what you like to have more. If you like more carbs in your diet, have more carbs in your diet. If you like more fats, have a higher fat diet. It's totally up to you. It's totally up to your personal preference and your lifestyle. Now, you don't have to go completely low carb and you shouldn't honestly go low fat because that's just bad for your hormone levels and you just need it for overall health. So I would recommend just having a balanced diet. Just having a balanced diet, let your carbs and your fats fluctuate and just hit your calorie amount. Hit your calories, hit your protein, let your carbs and your fats play each other out or play each other out, work work themselves out. Would that be right? I don't know, either way. But alternatively, you will wanna make adjustments every time your weight loss or your fat loss plateaus or stalls. So this is usually around three to four weeks. So every three to four weeks, decrease your calories by 100 to 200 calories. Again, this will be depending on how much cardio you're doing. When we talk about cardio, I'll talk about that as well. Kind of go over both sides of the spectrum. Now, if we're talking about supplements really quickly, only supplement when necessary. Use a whey protein if your protein intake for the day is lower than usual, because I guarantee it 95% of you who are watching this video are not hitting their protein take every single day because they're not getting in enough real quality whole food to hit their protein intake. So just supplement when necessary. Now, whew, that was a lot to take in, but that's just the technical side of things. Now the biggest part of your actual diet is adhering to it and sticking to it. So a huge rule I generally stick to, or I tell people to stick to if they're trying a diet or a meal plan or whatever is the 85-10 rule. 85% of your whole calories in a day being clean, unprocessed, whole foods for the most part. Then the other 15%, yeah, that can be the foods you like to have. Those foods you you need to incorporate into your diet for you to actually stick to that. Being a cookie at the end of the night or some ice cream or whatever. Obviously, don't overshoot. Don't have a bunch of ice cream. Have a whole box of cookies, but a couple cookies here and there. That makes you stick to your actual diet for 85% of it. And that's the goal. That's the long-term goal, right? So adherence is the major thing. It all comes down to hitting your daily calories at the end of the day. So if fasting in the morning helps you stick to your calories, because then you can push your calories to later on in the day. You can have bigger meals. You can have more of the meals you technically want to have because you don't have to fit them into five small meals within the day. Then be my guest. You can do that. Just because someone's fasting doesn't mean they're getting better results than someone who isn't fasting. Fasting is just a tool that you can use to hit your calories better in a given day. If you're fasting in the morning, but you're still over consuming, you're having like 3000 calories a day and your maintenance is like 2,500, you're still gonna be gaining weight. You're not gonna lose weight just cause you fast in the morning for like four or five hours. So just keep that in mind if fasting works for you and your lifestyle. Last but not least, tracking your calories for you to actually know how much you are having every single day. Like I mentioned before, using MyFitnessPal, track your calories, every single day. Now, can you get into really good shape by not tracking your calories? Absolutely, so many people do it. But for someone who is unexperienced or they don't know different portions or they don't know different macronutrients in a piece of chicken breast or in some eggs or in some oatmeal, then then how, how do you know how many calories you're having a day if you're not tracking that? So track your calories at least for a month or two. Oh, I know diet is the biggest part of the whole process and it's honestly the hardest part of the whole process. You can pop on an elliptical for cardio for an hour a day if you really wanted to, but if your diet is completely shit, unfortunately, you probably won't be getting results unless your metabolism is insane and you're free. I, we talked, we talked for a long time about diet, but uh, <sighs> cardio, let's get it. Do you have to do cardio? Like to actually see results, to actually lose body fat, do you need to do cardio? No, you technically don't need to do cardio. But here's the thing, here's the caveat, okay? If you don't do cardio, you die. Pretty self-explanatory, right? No, I'm just kidding. Obviously, you're not gonna die if you don't do cardio, but cardio is so good not only for trying to lose body fat and increasing that calorie deficit so you can technically eat more when you're burning more calories throughout a day, right? 
So if you're doing more cardio, you can eat more to still maintain that same calorie deficit. That's not always the right approach because then you'll think that just because you go for a 15 minute run means that you can eat however many calories it says on your Apple Watch you burned, that's how many more calories you can eat during a day, which is technically not correct. But by doing cardio, you're improving your heart health, okay? Health in general should be your main focus. Maintaining a healthy body is honestly the huge long-term goal. Yes, you wanna get into shape. Yes, you wanna lose body fat. But alternatively, if you're not healthy on the inside, why does it matter if you look good on the outside? So you do not want to start off by doing cardio every single day. One, because you will eventually hit a plateau. Your weight loss will stall, your fat loss will stall, and you have nowhere to adjust. Technically, you do have somewhere to adjust because you can lower your calories or you can increase the amount of time that you're doing cardio every single day, but if you're doing it already every single day, are you really gonna wanna do more cardio on top of that? Probably not, unless again, you're a freak. Now, you already guessed it representation by myself all you want to do because you don't want to be doing it every single day right like i just mentioned you will hit a plateau you'll have nowhere to adjust so start with two sessions per week don't overcomplicate it you will just make things so much more challenging for yourself and be consistent with it consistency is the biggest thing with all of this is if you're consistent with it cardio it won't even matter because you'll be so on top of it every single day but anyways start with two sessions per week either by tracking time or calories burned. Now, this won't always be consistent, but this is where I mean to consistently be inconsistent. Does that make sense? Here's how it goes. If you're tracking the calories burned on your Apple Watch, for an example, of you going for a 30 minute run, if the amount on your Apple Watch says 300 calories burned, obviously that's not gonna be accurate. The Apple Watch is not that accurate. Like, it barely anything in this world is accurate. Just, that's probably a lie. That's, that's probably a lie. Anyways, if you are burning 300 calories, doing a run three times per week. Eventually, when you hit a plateau and you have to adjust, you would try and increase that 300 calorie mark. So what I mean by this is just tracking the time or the calories burned if you're using your Apple Watch. If you're going for time, do two sessions of let's say 45 minutes on an incline treadmill. Then eventually when you go to adjust, you can increase this time going from 45 minutes to 60 minutes. And maybe now you don't wanna only do two sessions of 60 minutes per week. Well then split it up into three sessions where you're going, let's say 40 minutes, 40 minutes, 40 minutes. So you don't have to just increase the sessions from two to three. You can just increase the time that you are doing within those sessions or increase the calories burned. Again, just be consistent with whichever measurement you personally like to use. The biggest thing about cardio is adherence, okay? If you can't stick to your cardio routine or your daily routine, of doing cardio, then what's the point of even doing it if you absolutely hate it? Like obviously cardio, it's not gonna be fun all the time. You're not gonna wanna wake up, I don't know, go on the treadmill for however long, go for a run or whatever you like to do, but adherence is the biggest thing. So cardio can be anything. Cardio can be biking, walking, rowing, going for runs, doing interval training, doing hit circuits, whatever you want it to be, or even playing sports like basketball, going for long walks or whatever it may be. Okay, so adherence is the biggest thing. Now on top of your actual cardio, I totally always recommend walking at least 10,000 steps per day because this will increase your non-exercise activity thermogenesis or your need. So this is just the calories you burn throughout a given day besides doing your actual training and your cardio. So I would consider 10,000 steps per day, even though it's cardio, you're walking, that's cardio, but you're just increasing the amount of activity you're doing during the day by moving more through whatever, whatever you're doing during the day, washing the dishes, going for a walk, it doesn't matter. You're trying to increase your need. Now, when should you adjust your cardio? Well, if you start with two sessions per week of 45 minutes, let's say you're going for time, as soon as your progression stalls, meaning your weight loss or your fat loss, it, it the weight is not moving on the scale every single morning. Then. You can add more time, like I just mentioned, or add more calories burned to the amount of calories that you are already burning in a given week. If your progression stalls in, let's say, two to three weeks, then that is when you adjust your calories and your cardio. You can either adjust your calories or your cardio. So you can either increase the amount of sessions you do in a given week or increase the time and the calories burned, or you can lower your calories from your diet. Or you can actually do both, where you lower your calories by let's say 100, and then you increase the time, let's say from 60 minutes during the week to 80 minutes during the week, just as an example, okay? Now, alternatively, what you want to be doing is you wanna be doing the least amount of work possible to still get results. This might seem like stupid to you, but if you are only doing one cardio session per week, 
because you're not used to doing cardio every single week and you implement it into your program, into your plan. You only have to do one to two cardio sessions per week and the scale is continually dropping. Your weight is continually dropping week after week. Stick with that until your weight plateaus and you are no longer losing weight anymore. And then that's when you actually make adjustments, okay? Don't make adjustments too soon. Or don't make adjustments at all if you don't need to, right? So yeah, that's cardio. Is it fun? It can be, but is it actually fun? No, just do your damn cardio, okay? It'll help you in the long run, just do it. Now, training, let's do it. Now we have covered your diet, now we have covered cardio. Now, what is there left to cover? Well, your training, your actual training split you do in the gym, now this will alternatively depend on how many times per week you can actually go to the gym. If you can only go four times per week, you're probably gonna be doing an upper lower split where you do upper body, lower body, rest, upper body, lower body, then rest, rest. So you're training four times per week. But if you're training six times per week, like I am, then this is where you can implement a push pull legs routine. So in this training program, I'm doing four week mesocycles. So I am alternatively increasing the volume every single week until these four weeks. And I restart it after every four weeks. Now I don't take any deloads unless I completely need one. So I don't actually schedule in the deload. If your body needs the rest, then incorporate a deload week. And again, a deload week is just when you give your body that extra week to recover, you reduce your volume by pretty much half and then hit your next mesocycle after that deload. But there isn't any deloads scheduled in my training program. Now this is my current training program. Push Monday, pull Tuesday, Wednesday is legs, Thursday rest, and then push pull legs again. The first push workout will be chest focused. The first leg workout will be more squat focused. So I am working on my quads more. Second push workout will be more shoulder focused. And then the second leg workout will be revolved around deadlifts. Now, when I say squat focused or deadlift focused, I'm just basing my whole workout around my squats and my deadlifts. That's pretty much all I mean by that. Now, for an example, for day number one of my push workout, because it is chest focused, I am putting a lot of emphasis on the bench press and my incline press. Then I will be going straight into shoulder press, then incline press, lateral raise, chest flies, and then finishing off with a tricep isolation, being tricep pushdowns. Now again, the exercise selection, it doesn't matter as much, but I do try and keep it consistent throughout a four week mesocycle. So I will typically start with the bench press on day one of my push day for week one, two, three, and four. Then I will do three by eight, three by nine, three by 10, then four by eight. So I'm increasing the volume every single week. That's three sets of eight reps, three sets of nine reps, three sets of 10, and then four sets of eight reps. Now, can you go with more sets and lower reps? Yes, that's totally fine. Just remember that you have to equate volume if muscle building is your main priority. And in this case, I like to keep rep range generally a bit higher. It's safer for one and for two, you're creating more time under tension because you're doing more reps rather than let's say you do a four by five where you're doing four sets of five reps. The volume is almost the same, but you are doing one more set and you're doing lower reps. So the time under tension is less. So you just got to keep that in mind. So by the end of week four, I'm trying to add anywhere between 2.5 to even five pounds to my bench press or even higher depending on how much I'm eating and how my body is honestly reacting. Again, the same will be done with the shoulder press and the incline press going three by eight, three by nine, three by 10, and then going back down to four by eight and trying to get more weight than I have previously used in week number one. And then again, I will repeat that cycle every four weeks. If I need to take a deload, I will as well. As soon as we get down to lateral raises, chest flies, and tricep pushdowns, now I'm focusing more on the higher rep range. So I'm going between 12 to 15, and this is gonna be consistent throughout all four weeks, being weeks one, two, three, and four. Just because I say 12 to 15, most likely in week number one, I'll be doing 12, and then I'll try and increase the amount of reps I do every single set for the following weeks after that. If I get three by 12, I wanna get at least three by 13 or three by 14. So I'm increasing the volume, I'm increasing the reps. If I'm increasing my volume throughout the four weeks, that is the main goal of your training program so that you can properly progressively overload every single week. Now that is only day one of my push day. I will have the full training program in the description down below if you guys wanna copy it. I just wanted to go over day one to give you an example of how the volume increases every single week and how I go about every single mesocycle, but yeah.
That's training. All right, guys, now some things I may have missed. Micronutrients, just eat your micronutrients, eat your greens, eat your vegetables, eat your fruits, like they're good for you. The, the sugars within the fruits, there's nothing wrong with those. Just because you're having those sugars, doesn't mean you're gonna get fat. Overconsumption of your calories will make you fat, okay? Eat your micronutrients, they're good for you. Cheat days or refeed days, can you have cheat days? Yes, you can, I wouldn't really call it a cheat day, I would call it a cheat meal. But if you need to have a cheat meal to stick to your diet, then plan a cheat meal every Sunday night, every Saturday night. Raise your calories back up to maintenance for that day. If it helps you stick to your diet, if it makes you adhere to your diet, then that will make you actually stick to it over 12 to 16 weeks or however long you're going for the cut. Incorporate cheat meals if you want to. Don't go and binge every single night just because I told you you could have a cheat meal. You don't need to do that. Or you can also have refeed days when appropriate. Now you can literally have one every so often or one every week or one every two weeks, depending on how your progress is going. But a refi day is pretty much a controlled cheat day where you're increasing your calories back up to maintenance, usually just from carbohydrates. So let's say your maintenance is 2,500. You're currently having 2,000 calories every single day. Have a refi day where you return to maintenance or 2,500 calories just for that one day, and then you continue eating 2,000 calories for the rest of the week. Now, duration. How long should the cutting phase or your fat loss phase last for? This will depend on the individual and how much time they wanna be in a calorie deficit, but you don't really wanna go for anywhere longer than 16 to 20 weeks. 20 weeks is honestly the max that I would personally go. Usually a cutting phase for myself is anywhere between eight to 16 weeks, but again, the longer you're in a calorie deficit, the more muscle you are pretty much giving up. You're not building that much muscle when you're in a calorie deficit. You're making most of your muscle when you're in a surplus and you're eating more throughout a given day. So I wouldn't go for anywhere longer than 16 weeks because again, it will start to get weaker. Your mind will honestly with you and you won't want to keep going on and you'll be super drained. So no longer than 16 weeks. And I would say a minimum of eight to 10 weeks so that you can actually see results and get motivated by you seeing progress every single week. And last but not least, your goals. None of this matters. Your cardio, your diet, your training, none of, none of this matters. You don't have goals. If you don't set, if you don't have ambitions to achieve different goals in your life, whether that be work, training, like getting into better shape, it doesn't matter. What's the point of even starting a transformation? What's the point in busting your ass every single day? If you don't have a goal. If you don't, if you don't have that end goal you want to hit, because yeah, maybe we'll, you'll never get to that end goal. But if you have that in your head, if you have that mentality that you are striving, you, you are working towards that. That will push you like no other every single day. You gotta put in the work if you wanna actually like get somewhere within your dream physique, within anything you do in your life. Like I'm just very, very grateful to be able to even train every single day and better myself. Like that should be your motivation. If you can go to the gym and you can physically work out, that's a blessing. That's a blessing to be able to work out, to try and better yourself every single day. Like there's so many people in the world who wish who wish, who honestly would pay millions of dollars to be able to work out every single day and be healthy and fit and eat good food and train. So just be grateful, be grateful for that. Let that be your motivation, okay? So with all that being said, guys, I literally, I, I detailed and I outlined everything you need to know to get into the best shape of your life. I gave you what to do for cardio. I gave you what to do for your diet, what to do for your training program, especially the motivation and the goals at the end. You need that, you absolutely need that, okay? Not from me, but from yourself. If you can bring that out of yourself, you are unstoppable, you are absolutely unstoppable. And after the 16 weeks of you cutting, you shredding down, you'll be a beast, I guarantee it. Even, like men or women, like I'm not just referring to guys here, I'm just saying like guys as in a general like person, like a person in this world. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and maybe you don't want to implement the things I talked about. Maybe you don't want to do your own cardio, do your own diet. Maybe you don't want to follow the free training program I'm giving you guys. But let's say you want that little bit of extra accountability and you want the program literally all detailed for you in an app with video demonstrations, your own diet, your own training program, everything customized around you. Click the link down below, join our team, join the squad. Trust me, we got a good team for and it's, it's absolutely unreal. I love the community as well. And during this time, I am as well doing a 60% off sale. 60% off. Just because me, myself, I am starting day one of the shred of the same program that everybody else is gonna be running. So yeah, hopefully we can make some gains together. With that being said, guys, I appreciate you guys so much for tuning into this one. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys in the next one. All right, peace.